will take stanza number three one more time. We are going to take that stanza number three one more time. The stanza says, Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reign it forever and ever. That's why we're here. Crown Him and crown Him. He's our prophet. He's our priest. He's our king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto Him alone belong. We'll praise Him with that stanza before we settle down to pray. So let's take it once more. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with the sun as Jesus, Savior, reign forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning we want to pray. And uh, before we pray, let me quickly just remind us of some few issues that have faced us in the course of this meeting. We have been praying, and I don't think we can pray sufficiently enough. That's why we need to keep on praying. One critical issue that we have been confronted with since we came here on Wednesday is the matter of this same Jesus as we saw him in Acts. One very important statement that keeps ringing over and over in my heart since the preparations of this meeting began is the issue of a statement that I saw in the Bible study outline. And the statement says, that the Jesus you keep seeing is the Jesus you keep becoming. The Jesus that you did not see, you would not become that Jesus. And for me that statement is too strong to be pushed aside. And it tells me the story of my life. That at whatever level I am presently, it is actually a product of the Jesus that I've been seeing. And I came also to understand that if only I can see the Jesus that is being introduced to me in this meeting, something is going to happen that is going to be beyond my imagination. That is why this morning I thought it is necessary for us to pray over that matter again. Men saw Jesus from different angles and from different perspectives. And we know that many of us, as we are standing here this morning, we are a product of the kind of Jesus that several men have introduced unto us. And that's why we would need to pray. We need to pray. Because if you see a wrong Jesus, the possibility of you becoming that same wrong Jesus is very high. You can't become what you have not seen. It is what you have seen that you can actually become. So when you hear servants of the Lord over the ages warning us, draw our attention to the matter of this Jesus, this same Jesus, it is only but to help us know that what 
made them to remain what they have remained over the years is because of the Jesus that they kept seeing. And you cannot become greater than the Jesus that you have been seeing. Now, let's read some few scriptures just to help us be able to pray. Hear what Paul said in 2 Corinthians. Again, I'm reminding us of some of the things that we have had. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul said something. And I want us to remind ourselves again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 says, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that, ye, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But, take note of verse 3, But, I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. The same man speaking. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1 says, all foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? I wish we can go beyond that, but we don't have the space of time to do that. But see, there are some critical issues that our brother Paul was raising from these passages of the scripture that we have looked at. We are in an age and a time when there are two main gospels that have been preached. The first one is the one that we saw in first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11. The one that Paul calls another Jesus. The other one is the one that we were referred to on the first day of this meeting. When the angels came and met the men of Galilee and asked them a question. Why are you standing here gazing up into the sky? And then they said something. They said, this same Jesus. And I like the translation in Hausa because it brings out something that looks so dear to my heart. The same word, they said, this same Jesus was translated as one and Jesus. And when they said one na Yesu, it simply connotes that there is another Yesu somewhere else. This morning, the burden of my heart and what I feel God would have us to pray on is this trouble that is part and parcel of our age, which actually didn't start today. It had been there long before now. The gospel of another Jesus. If we are going to actually succeed to be able to cross from this place into the next place that God has prepared for us, there is a demand that God is putting upon our lives. And the demand is that this other Jesus that men are preaching cannot take you to that place. You have to come back to this same Jesus. It 
was that worry that disturbed our brother Paul so much that after he had finished saying some things to the Galatians, by the time he came to chapter 3, the next thing that he would say to them is that, Oh ye foolish Galatians, who is it that bewitched you? How come that we brought you the correct Jesus and another man brought you another Jesus and now you are going to trap that second Jesus? I know the worry of my heart is that as you go back and you read chapter 2 of that same Galatians, you will discover that even our uncle, brother Peter, at a point, he was also brought into this kind of a very dangerous train where he was beginning to present another Jesus. Paul confronted him. He said, before the rest of the Jewish Christians came and met them, Peter was joyfully along with several others eating with the Gentile believers. But immediately these ones came. He now turned around and he began to segregate himself away from them. And Paul had to confront him and say, but why would you do this, brother Peter? As an elder in our midst, why would you do this? And thank God that Peter reasoned and understood what Paul was saying. Otherwise, he would have been preaching another Jesus, very much different from the Jesus that he ever preached. You know the sad thing about it? Is that some of the people that labored over our lives before, some of the people that led us to Christ before, they are the same people that today are championing the gospel of another Jesus. I know that is what fears my heart so much. That they labored before to preach the Jesus they saw from the scripture. But with time, with pressure upon them, with all kinds of deceit upon them, with a desire to belong, and sometimes it's just to belong to a clique of people who are actually nothing, they also decided to embrace the gospel of another Jesus. And that is what they are championing now, the gospel of another Jesus. We don't have the time, but I want to tell you, if you check all around you, this gospel is everywhere. If you check the music that we are having today, whether in the church or outside the church, is the gospel of another Jesus. One day, I was so unfortunate to hear somebody say something, because it worried my heart so badly. One young man came to the stage during a worship service on a Sunday morning. And when he collected the mic, the next thing that he said to us is that today we are going to worship God in the reggae way. Immediately he said the reggae way, there was a rebellion inside of me. I knew that this is the other gospel, the gospel of another Jesus coming out again. Where did we learn them from the scripture? Where did you see it in the psalm? Praise God in the reggae way. We never saw something like that in the scripture. Maybe he was too bold. Others will not tell you. We will praise God in the reggae way. But they will bring some other methods of praising God. And they will bring it. And all of us will join. And we will be dancing to whatever they are saying. Our worship today has lacked so much of this gospel of this same Jesus. That's why we want to spend some few moments to pray for ourselves. You know why? We are leaving this meeting today, whether we like it or not. And tomorrow morning, we are going to be in our different local assemblies. This gospel that we had here is very likely. It will be a different one we are going to hear tomorrow morning. And my fear is that like it was said of the Galatians, some of us will be so foolish that after we have seen Jesus, after we have been introduced to Jesus, we will also go and collect that other, another Jesus, thinking that it is possible to combine another Jesus with this same Jesus. Brother, it is not possible. And if we are not going to make the mistakes of several others, it means we will just need to pray.
And the time is finished, but we must pray. We must pray. The gospel of another Jesus is everywhere. Is everywhere. Is everywhere. When it comes to marriage, you will see it there. When it comes to ceremonies, you will see it there. And I've seen several of us as disciples who made up our minds that let me follow this another Jesus. After we have finished the marriage, then we will come back and settle ourselves here. Because I know these brethren are going to accept us. Can I ask you, do you know what is going to happen when you go into that backsliding stage? Don't you know that Satan that you are dealing with, the Bible says he has come to steal, to kill, and if he finds an opportunity, he wants to destroy you for life. Yet, you can imagine that. Let me go and test that other gospel and come back here. The gospel of another Jesus. This morning, that's why I want to pray and say, Lord, it's not that gospel any longer from this meeting. It's not this gospel again. The gospel I want to hold on to, the Jesus I want to hold on to, is this same Jesus whom has been described to us in diverse ways from the beginning of this meeting until today. Is this same Jesus that I want to follow. I want to pattern my life after the pattern I've seen of him. I want to go out with a passion like the one he had. The gospel of this same Jesus is going to become my stay from this moment onwards. That's what we want to do. And lastly, let me read a warning that God gave unto one man who didn't take heed to that warning in Genesis chapter 19. And then we will pray. Look at Genesis chapter 19. One man was warned there. Verse 15. Genesis 19 verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened the Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Now look at verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, This is the warning. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. That's the warning this morning. Escape for thy life. That's the warning. Escape for your life. This Jesus that men are preaching, this another Jesus that men are preaching, the word of God is saying, escape from that kind of Jesus for your own life's sake. Don't dwell on the same plane with them. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. The man that was giving this instruction didn't listen, and he was consumed. And his story is still here with us today. I don't know whether you also follow his path. So can you stand up as we pray this morning? This gospel of another Jesus, we don't want to continue that way. Our pursuit from now on will no longer be for another Jesus. You have pursued him for too long. You have pursued him for too long. The first prayer you are going to pray this morning, simple and straightforward, is that, Lord, my pursuit of another Jesus must terminate from this meeting. The other Jesus that gives me a picture of what I cannot find in the scripture, that pursuit must terminate this morning. Please, can you pray? That's the prayer we are going to be praying this morning. My pursuit of another Jesus, another Jesus in worship, Another Jesus in dressing, another Jesus in family living, another Jesus in the place of work, another Jesus in my interactions, another Jesus in my relationships, another Jesus in every sphere of my life. The pursuit of that another Jesus. Lord, bring it to an end with this meeting. Bring it to an end with this meeting. Bring it to an end with this meeting. The struggle of following after another Jesus. Lord, let it cease in my life. 
Let it cease in my life. Let it not continue beyond this meeting. With what you have done these days, oh God, let this pursuit terminate in the name of Jesus. I don't know what God is calling you, but in the days of the Galatians, the Bible said, Oh, ye foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? How come that you started in the spirit and now you are terminating in the flesh? How come? How come that you receive Jesus genuinely and now you are believing another gospel that does not have an end that is suitable for you? How come? Wouldn't you pray this morning and say, Lord, Lord, the pursuit of another Jesus, it must terminate from this meeting. It must end from this meeting. It must end from this meeting. The deceitfulness that has brought me to keep following after another Jesus, no matter who it is that is presenting it, Lord, let it finish from this meeting. Let it finish. Let it finish. Let it finish, oh God. Let it finish. Lord, let it finish. Let it finish, oh God. Let it finish, oh God. Let it never continue beyond this meeting. The deceitfulness that has taken me out of this Jesus. Lord, let it cease from this meeting. Let it cease. Let it cease. Let it cease. Some of the men that are going to present us with this another Jesus are men that possibly have contacted the correct Jesus, but they are no longer in tune with him. They are no longer in a relationship with him. They are no longer. They are our elder brothers, but they have gone off course. Can you beg God and say, Lord, it doesn't matter who is presenting another Jesus. Give me the boldness to say no to another Jesus. Give me the boldness, O oh God. Give me the strength, O oh God. Give me the determination, O oh God, to say no to another Jesus. Ah, Lord, please do this, do this. Lord, please do this in our hearts this morning. The boldness to say no to another Jesus, no matter who it is that is presenting it. The boldness to say no to another gospel. The boldness to resist another Jesus. Lord, the boldness to say no. The boldness to refuse to associate with another Jesus, with another gospel, with another message. Lord, the boldness to say no. Grant unto me. Grant unto me. Grant unto me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Listen. The question that Paul asks the Galatians, I know it's the same question God is asking up till now. Oh, you foolish brother and sister. You started in the spirit several years ago. They gave you the correct gospel. You were brought into discipleship. You were taught the ways of Jesus. But not long after you departed from there, you went and embraced another gospel. You dropped what would have actually taken you to heaven. You went and embraced something that is taking men to hellfire. And one reason why several of us did that is because we also want to belong. We don't want to be the odd man out. Somebody defined a Christian, he said he is the odd man out. We want to belong, so we also embrace the same gospel. We want to belong, so we also started dressing like them. We want to belong, so we started also keeping the same company. We want to belong, so we also went to do the things that they are also doing. We wanted to belong, so we changed our message completely. We want to belong, so we just embrace everything that the tele-evangelist brought unto us. 
Can you pray once more and say, Lord, the pursuit of this another Jesus. Let it finish. Let it finish. Let it finish. Lord, let it finish. 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 Let it finish, oh God. Let it finish from this meeting. Many years ago, you have sung and sung and sung. He said, Oh man, by God, it is by God. Oh man, by God, it is by God. But the new gospel has presented the old man in a new way. And you have gone back to impress it. Can you beg God and say, Lord, let it finish with me. 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 I don't want to appear in heaven. And all that heaven will say unto me, Oh, ye foolish star, who has bewitched you that you started in the spirit and you ended up in the flesh? What was said to the Galatians will be said to several other people. It will be said. But you can escape for your life. Lord was told, escape for your life. Escape for your life. Escape, escape. I don't know what escape will mean to you, but you need to escape for your life. You need to escape if you are going to find a place in heaven. Would you want to ask God and say, Lord, help me to resume my pursuit of this same Jesus after this meeting. After you have stopped the pursuit of another Jesus, can you now say, God, I want to resume your pursuit. Those of us that are meeting Jesus for the first time, beg God and say, Lord, for the remaining part of my life, it is this same Jesus I will pursue. It is this same Jesus that will go after. It is this same Jesus and nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. This same Jesus will be my daily delight. He will be my pursuit. He will be my life. He will be my message. He will be my theme. He will be my lifestyle. He will be my everything. Lord, that is a cry that I cry this morning. This same Jesus, Lord, help me that he will be my one and only pursuit for the rest of life. Oh, that Lord, he will be my one and only pursuit in life. Lord, my one and only pursuit. Nothing more, nothing less. Lord, him and him only. Him and him only. That's what I'm begging. That Lord, you will cause to happen with me. In the name of Jesus. More about him. More about him. More about him. More and more about him. And less and less of another Jesus. Lord, let that be my pursuit. Let that be my pursuit. Let that be my pursuit. Lord, wherever. In whatever situation. In whatever condition. Let this Jesus be my pursuit. He's enough for me. He's enough for me. The man of Calvary is enough for me. He's enough for me. He said no for me. The man of Calvary said no for me. He said no for me. He said no for me. The man of Calvary said no for me. Can you say, Lord, this man of Calvary, he said no for me. This man of Calvary, he said no for me. He will be my life pursuit. He will be my life pursuit. He will be my life pursuit because he is enough for me. Every other man, Lord, no, no. Every other Jesus, no matter who is presenting him, Lord, no to him. No to him. The man of Calvary is enough for me. The man of Calvary, I'm satisfied with him. The man of Calvary is adequate enough for me. Lord, in life, in ministry, in every matter, this man of Calvary, he will remain my one and only singular pursuit. Lord, let it come to pass. 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 
let it come to pass in jesus name we have prayed our father this morning there's only but one prayer upon our hearts we have seen how this another jesus has wreaked havoc in our lives we have seen how our lives have wasted over the years we didn't grow as we ought to grow we didn't become useful as we ought to become useful in our hopes this another jesus has shattered so many things lord even in the so-called ministry we have been engaged with this another jesus has made us to do what actually we didn't see in the scripture this morning as we come unto you as your children we're asking you for forgiveness lord like you said unto the galatians oh ye foolish galatians who has bewitched you lord as it were we have been bewitched we have been deceived and yet lord we accepted the deceit we want to beg you for forgiveness in the name of jesus christ you taught us the truth you led us in the path of the truth the jesus you gave us is the same one that said i am the truth yet lord we embrace lies we embrace deceits we embrace all kinds of terrible things this morning as we come before you standing together we are asking you for forgiveness over that war god which we have allowed our lives to have entered into it is not you it is we that dragged ourselves there lord have mercy over us in the name of jesus our prayer this morning is that lord from this day from this meeting from this mount our pursuit will no longer be for another jesus our pursuit will be for this same jesus the man of calvary this same jesus that has won your approval this same jesus that has become oh god your joy and your delight this same jesus that you have introduced unto us we are asking that lord from this meeting he will ever and continue to remain our one and singular pursuit in the name of jesus christ give us the grace give us the strength internally and externally to say no to any other jesus that men would want to present unto us help us that as we live our lives we will live presenting this same jesus not another jesus thank you for hearing us in jesus name we have prayed